what is going on, fiend? So, turns out, Pooh, Blood, and Honey is one of the worst-reviewed films of all time. It's an achievement. Probably not the one that the uh, filmmakers were actually going for. Um, the achievement they got, I'm sure they were shooting for something a little bit higher. But hey, you can hang your hat on it, right? <laughs> but to be fair, to be fair, I don't think any of us was really looking at this film to be the next big horror hotness. Like, we weren't looking at Pooh and Piglet as being the next slasher villain icons, right? I don't think any of us was really looking at it like that. This movie was just a best way to put it, it was a brain fart. It was an idea that this filmmaker had and he made a movie with it. And he was allowed to do it because A.A. Mline's characters, Pooh and the rest of them, um, they're in the public domain now, so he was allowed to do his thing. Didn't pan out, obviously. Um, uh, I didn't think the movie was all that bad. Um, you could clearly tell Pooh and Piglet were guys in rubber masks. Um, but the kills were good. Uh, the story, but I don't think any of us was really going into it for the story either. We wanted to see a feral Pooh and Piglet fucking people up. That's basically what we wanted to see, and that is what we got with this film. I don't know what these reviewers were I have, were thinking that they were going to get. Like, I read one from IGN, and he was just like, I I just don't understand this movie, and what is this movie supposed to be about? And it's like, dude, it's a B-movie. It is an old 1970s style drive-in trash B-movie. You just go to it to go to it. You watch it to watch it. Period. Point blank. But, um, I have the article where they're talking about it being one of the worst reviewed movies of all time, so I will pull that up real quick and I will be right back. So this is from WIONnews.com, says Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey becomes one of the worst reviewed films of all time. And there's our boy, just dripping with honey. Huh. Hope that's honey. It is. It says the reviews of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, that much touted slasher horror remake of A.A. Maline's beloved children's story are here. And boy, it doesn't look good. The film has a score of 6% on the review aggregation site Rotten Tomatoes. The critical consensus is just, oh bother, Pooh's famous catchphrase, and that should give an idea as to how bad this movie is, as per the critics at least, but even the audiences have given it a 58% rating. Blood and Honey became possible because the copyright for the original stories and related illustrations by E.H. Shepard entered the public domain in the United States in 2021, 95 years after their first publication. This means that anyone is free to use the characters and stories in their own works without obtaining permission from the copyright holder. And writer Rise Frank Waterfield, who is the director, chose that moment to make a movie about Pooh and the other inhabitants of the Hundred Acre Wood Psychopathic Murders. The movie was said to be a retelling of the stories. In this adaption, it's revealed that Christopher Robin and his animal friends did have all those adventures during Robin's childhood. But as he grew up and went to college, the animals became increasingly hungry and feral. Eventually, they became so deranged that they terrorize a group of girls who are staying in a rural cabin. Frank Wakefield explained the synopsis in his own words in an interview with Variety. He said Christopher Robin is pulled away from them, and he has not given them food, and it's made Pooh and Piglet, Piglet's life quite difficult, because they've had to fend for themselves so much they've essentially became feral. 
So they've gone back to their animal roots. They are no longer tame. They are like a vicious bear and pig who want to go around and try and find prey. Rolling Stone's Mike Clee wrote, Blood and Honey is just a hundred acre wasteland, a witless gory boar. And in the end, you are just depressed that anyone spent time working on it. That's a little harsh. New York Times' Kyle Turner wrote, It's not funny enough to have anything clever to say about its gag, and it's not exciting enough to be a competent horror movie. The rap's William Bibelani wrote, The film feels half-written, and the half we got wasn't the good half. Characters and storylines pop up out of nowhere, disappear into the ether, and almost all of them turn out to be pointless. And here's the IGN one that I was referencing. IGN's Matt Donato wrote, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is noteworthy only for its name, as it turns out, the blending slasher blood and Pooh's honey together with is like oil and water. It just doesn't mix. Mashable's Jason Adams wrote, Disney's cartoon drawing had more character in one swoop of pencil line than any of these women are given before they start getting their faces mashed into wood chippers and their tops torn off. So yeah, seems like this movie's not very, very well liked. Obviously. Um... Did I like it? It was okay. Seemed better. But I've also seen way worse. Um, the Banana Splits movie. Complete trash. That movie right now, to me, is up here. I would put Pooh within that top five of movies that... I may not watch again. Um... Pooh, Blood, and Honey, that is. But I didn't think it was... It was a good idea in theory. And I applaud the director for taking a public domain um, property and doing something unique with it. I mean, hey, who would have thought you could have made a horror movie out of Pooh? I mean, really. Let's all sit back and just take a moment to think about that. Who would have thought to have taken Winnie the Pooh and made a freaking horror movie out of it? I wouldn't have. And I'm sure a bunch of you wouldn't have either. Hey, got to golf clap. Got to applaud him. Hey, he had the balls to, the, to do it. So, just didn't pan out. So, on another note. And this kind of bothered me. And this is not the first time I've seen something like this. But after seeing it for this film, um, it's kind of made me like, why? I get we all are fans of certain things. People were fans of Winnie the Pooh. There's, I mean, even me, I was a fan. I used to watch Pooh Corner on Disney Channel back in the 80s when Disney Channel first launched a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, my sons loved Winnie the Pooh as kids. And there's so many other things that we have loved and we have cherished and somebody has taken it and in their own vision and own way, they have made a work of art out of it. And though we may not agree with it, may not like it, hell, may even just completely hate it, does it give us the right to communicate death threats to that person? So, Rise Frank Waterfield, um, stated in an, a recent interview uh, the agent's France Press that he has received death threats for making poo, blood, and honey. Why? Why? Here's the thing about art. As I said before, somebody's art we may not always agree with we may not like it we may as i said before hate it 
with all of our heart and soul. But art is two things. Art is subjective and it is expressive. And Mr. Waterfield chose Winnie the Pooh, who he had every right to legally to do so, as a way to express himself as he saw fit. He told a story. Wasn't a good story. And I'll be first to admit, it wasn't a good story. The movie wasn't even a good movie. But when I paid for my ticket and I went and sat my big ass down in that chair and I watched it, and I was very surprised that we even got it here in Hawaii. So thank you, Hawaii, for actually bringing us a B movie to a theater. I went into it knowing this is not going to be Friday the 13th. This is not going to be Halloween, which it was damn near almost as good as these new Halloween movies that we've gotten recently, to be fair. Um, it wasn't going to be anything to write home about. It wasn't going to be something that 50 years from now I'm going to look back on and be like, that stood the test of time and left a giant stamp on the genre of horror. I knew all those things when I went into that theater. And because I knew all those things when I went into that theater and sat down, I was able to sit there and enjoy that movie for as bad as it was, as bad as it was, I did enjoy it. I had fun. Hell, I laughed at some of the stuff that was going on in it. And at no time did I ever walk out of that theater and go, Oh, that Mr. Waterfield, ooh, I'm so mad I'm going to go online and I'm going to send him a death threat. Sad world we live in today, folks. Sad world. I don't think any of us have the right to that. We can voice our opinions. We can, and we have the right to dislike something, like something, love, hate. But never do we have the right to wish harm on another person. And I will never condone that. And reading that article today and similar articles just like it has made me very ashamed. It has made me very ashamed because I have always looked at, and I'm not just putting this on the horror community, but I am using the horror community or just horror fans as a whole for as example. We have always been one of the most inclusive groups of fans in any genre, any medium, anything. Horror fans have been some of the most welcoming, loving, passionate people I have ever known. And that was the biggest reason why I became a fan. It wasn't because it was the great kills or the, the semi-okay eh, stories. It was the fans and the people that I connected with and the friends that I made over the years. And I've still got those friendships today because of my love of horror movies. It's filmmakers. It's effects artists. And I share that love with so many other people. so many other people but then here recently to start seeing things like this I get it I have been mad as mm, over certain directions that films have went in these last Halloween movies the 2018 movie I was like okay it's good but I knew they were playing it safe I knew they were playing it safe and then when they did the other two it was a complete shit show. But I didn't go online and wish harm on nobody. They told their story. They created their art. And what they thought that they created was a masterpiece. But to the rest of us, it wasn't. 
and maybe to some it was. But I'll never tell you not to like it. I'll never tell you that because I hate it, you have to like it. Or if I hate it, you have to hate it. Got it mixed up. Or if I love it, you have to love it. That's not how it works. We're not all going to agree. We're not all going to create something that everybody enjoys or likes. It's fine. I've had videos on my YouTube channel that bombed. Yeah, I do. Even though YouTube doesn't necessarily look at thumbs up and thumbs down, I still do. I still care. And I've had shorts and videos that fell between 60 and 70%. And you know what that told me? I needed to do better. I needed to do better. But I didn't get mad at those people for giving me a thumbs down and I didn't wish hate and harm upon them for doing so. They made a choice. They voiced their opinion. Something that they have a right to do. Just like this young man had a right to make his movie. And just because we didn't like it, it doesn't give us the right to wish him harm. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I've ranted enough. I just want us to do better as a community. As a group. Because I love horror movies. I love all you horror fans, horror nerds, horror geeks, whatever you call yourself. And I want us to always be that group that welcomes everybody in. And you gotta remember, horror movies, <laughs> the foundation of the house that is horror movies was built on a lot of bad movies, believe me. Ain't been, <laughs> not all of them have been bangers. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. It's enough of my little rant. But uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching. It's been your old buddy, Fiendish J. And I will see you again next time. Woohoo! <laughs>